We're gonna be starting off with the interview I did a little bit earlier this year with University of Michigan professor David Dunning. I brought him on to talk about the Dunning-Kruger effect named after him because one of the goals that I had for the show early on was that I wanted to expose people to psychological principles, political psychological principles, so that then they could analyze the behavior and activity of politicians and voters and learn a little bit from it. The Dunning-Kruger effect is a really interesting one that is very applicable to our president and honestly a lot of other politicians. And so here is that interview. The Dunning-Kruger effect, it is complex. People are just starting to learn about it and in some cases taking sort of the wrong idea from it in how they apply it to politics. So what does it actually mean based on your research? Well, the, the Dunning-Kruger effect, if you boil it down to its most basic form, is simply the observation that uh, incompetent people or people who aren't experts um, don't know they aren't experts or, or scratch that. They actually can't know they, they're experts or they can't know uh, the shortcomings or the incompetencies uh, that they may uh, possess. Uh, that's what it is in a short form. Uh, the key in the way in which people tend to get it wrong is they tend to think that this is a phenomenon that basically inflicts other people and it's all about them and how they get it wrong. But actually the key thing to keep in mind is this is a phenomenon that sooner or later hits all of us. Uh, it's really about us and our own incompetencies and our own shortcomings. Exactly, yeah, yeah, I as a person with a lot of pride in myself would like to assume that it only happens to other people, but I do want to be more cognizant of it. And so that's why in, in a little bit we will talk about some ways to be to try to be aware of this and what you can do to uh, sort of circumvent it. Um, in terms of politics though, it is most often invoked in my experience and by me uh, in reference to Donald Trump. So what is it about Donald Trump that makes it that people want to use this concept to explain his communication style and his appeal? Well, uh, if you observe Donald Trump uh, over any period of time, what you realize is he likes to boast that he knows more than other people. He knows more about war than his generals. He knows more about the economy uh, than his, the economists that are advising him. He knows more about X than the X people who uh, uh, have got degrees in whatever X is. And I don't think such a person really exists. Uh, hmm. The person who's more expert than everybody else in everything just can't possibly be. Um, that suggests that maybe there are some shortcomings he's not aware of. Uh, I think that is probably the case. Uh, a little, it, it, I think it's somewhat complicated with him because I think that there's also a healthy dose of brand building. That whether mm -hmm. whether he actually believes that he's an expert on nuclear weapons technology, he definitely wants you to think that he's an expert on that. Um, but, but zooming out from Donald Trump, why is it that we as people have so much trouble acknowledging and understanding our limitations in particular areas? Uh, uh, the reason we have trouble is because of a paradox, uh, which is that to spot expertise in other people, obviously, you need expertise in yourself. But that's also true for spotting lack of expertise. That is, to be able to tell when a person has a shortcoming or to tell when a person might be getting something wrong. Well, you need the expertise to be able to judge that, the true expertise to judge that. Now, if you lack that expertise, it means that you lack the very knowledge you need in order to identify shortcomings. And that's true not only in judgments of other people, but it's also true of the self. Uh, so ultimately what that means is people who lack knowledge lack the knowledge to realize they lack the knowledge. If people don't understand that this is even necessarily a thing that exists, how do we try to get people to understand and recognize? Like, how do you get past this problem if people don't even know that it is a problem to, be, to get past? Well, what you need to do is you need to do something perhaps that is done in medicine. Uh, which is called a competency challenge. That is, you uh, give people a test or you give people a task to do, uh, see, uh, ask them how well they think they're doing on it, and then you show them how well they're actually doing on it. Mm -hmm. And often what you find is people can very easily recognize uh, all of a sudden at that moment what they don't know. So, for example, um, one common exercise uh, that can be done in the laboratory is if you ask people how a, how a helicopter works or how a ballpoint pen works, they'll go, yeah, sure, I absolutely know how that works. And then you say, okay, show me. Mm -hmm. And in detail, uh, how a helicopter works. Uh, and also, in, uh, by the way, um, like include the detail about how a helicopter moves forward 
and backward. <laughs> and uh, people uh, suddenly realize there are holes in their knowledge that they weren't aware of before. So there, there are things that you, can, uh, that you can do, but one of the things that you can do for yourself is often if, um, if a question is important enough, do spend some time thinking about how you might be wrong. Uh, often uh, you begin to realize uh, cautions or questions that you wouldn't have been uh, otherwise aware of. Okay, interesting. Okay, so it's a complex process, but but I think that that uh, people can can take from that at least the beginning steps steps of dealing with this. It, it seems like one of the things that you gain through experience in a topic is factual knowledge about it. Um, particularly in politics, people seem to have a difficulty in differentiating between opinions that they hold strongly and things that are objectively true, um, mm -hmm. which might be another uh, psychological problem with humanity that's sort of inherent to it. Uh, is that a part of this problem, that people have a difficulty in understanding what is and is not actually a fact? I think that it is part of it, because you can't know that you're factually wrong if you have a hard time identifying what a fact is. And in fact, what we find in our own work is that if you ask uh, Democrats or Republicans factual questions, not only opinion questions, but factual questions, they'll differ quite wide, wide, wildly in terms of uh, what they construe as facts on the ground when it comes to economics, uh, politics, or the social seat in America. So, mm -hmm. for example, uh, during the Obama administration, a majority of Republicans will say the stock market went down, a majority of uh, Democrats will say it went up. Um, what happened to the poverty rate the first two years of the Obama administration? Uh, Republicans will say it went up, Democrats will say it went down. Now, uh, the truth for one of those questions favors the Democrats. The truth for what the other question favors Republicans. But Republicans and Democrats tend to come to factual beliefs that only favor themselves. Yeah, yeah, and I've uh, I've actually taken a couple of those sorts of online tests about basic historical knowledge, and when you get the results and realize how you've been wrong, that's a humbling experience. Mm. Uh, it makes you realize what a what a you know a walking primate you are, <laughs> I guess, uh, <laughs> that we still have these issues. So, um, I want to ask you another question. I assume a little bit of this is going to be probably not as grounded in your research, but but I am curious about some of the implications. I, I wonder, politicians and members of the media. Um, Consciously or unconsciously, I wonder if people, people in positions of authority and influence are becoming a little bit more savvy about exploiting some of these psychological issues and gaps um, to advance their agenda, whether political or a narrative that they're pushing. Uh, do you feel that that, that that might be accurate? Well, I, I think uh, experts uh, uh, in dealing with people have always been somewhat aware of this. Mm -hmm. um, uh, remember, P.T. Bartom said there's a sucker born every minute. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is, the fact that there is ignorance that can be exploited uh, is something that uh, has been known since time immemorial. I think with the internet and with the high speed and the high availability of news, we it's just much more visible. Uh, mm -hmm. That is, we see a lot of other people falling prey to it. The only question is, is we don't see ourselves falling prey to it, and that's the <laughs> next step that we have to achieve somehow. Okay, I'm gonna work on that in advance of our eventual second conversation. Uh, Dr. Dunning, thank you so much for joining us. I've been wanting to talk to you about your research for quite some time, so thank you for joining us on The Damage Report. Thank you, my pleasure. Uh, also, as a quick aside, I just want to say, um, people love to like talk about like a hypothetical, like if I was able to go back in time, like 500 years, oh my God, with my modern knowledge, I could be king, I could rule all, I'd be able to invent all these technologies and everything. I don't think so, I, don't, I, couldn't, I couldn't make anything. A microwave is effectively magic to me. He brought up uh, helicopters and ballpoint pens. I could, if you gave me 10 years, I could not make a ballpoint pen for myself. So um, I think we should have a little bit of humility even in fictional time travel scenarios. Thank you for watching this clip from The Damage Report. For more content from the show and access to TYT Network members only exclusives, go to tyt.com slash Brooke. Wait, no, it's tyt.com slash John. Go to tyt.com slash John to sign up.